about prolog operators and arithmetic so what we had been discussing earlier uh, am i audible students is this uh, ppt visible anybody can unmute and tell me yes ma'am visible is the presentation visible to you yes ma'am okay so um, earlier we had been discussing about a uh, basic prolog program and we had discussed how we can write a basic prolog program there are two basic components we have discussed for a prolog program the first was writing facts and the second was writing rules so in earlier two labs we had in detail discussed how we can write facts and how we can write rules so today we are going one step ahead and we are going to discuss about operators and arithmetic uh, that we can use in the basic prolog programs though when we started discussing about prolog we had discussed that we are not going to use prolog for calculate calculation purpose or we are not going to use prolog for applications where multiple calculations are required like we had been doing in third generation languages but yet there are going to be many instances where in uh, while asserting common sense or knowledge to computer will require use of basic arithmetic operators and hence we are going to discuss them today okay so they are very very simple and uh, we'll be able to perform the simple programs with arithmetic operators very easily so let us discuss that today so we are going to start with first of all documentation comments so for whatever programs we have written we all know what is importance of writing comments so in prolog if you want to write any comment there are two ways how comments can be written the first way is single line comment a single line comment is a comment which starts with a percentage percentage sign so whatever you write after single percentage sign up to end of the line is considered as the comment in prolog if you want to write a multi line comment then just like see comment uh, you have to use slash star and it should be ending with uh, star slash so whatever lines you write between these characters will be considered as comment so uh, please do use comments uh, to specify the aim of the program or wherever any understanding is required in prolog program then have a habit of using comments appropriately now let us move ahead what is the next basic thing that you can do with prolog using the operators so uh, we can check the data type uh over here we can check the types over here so suppose you are using some bar capital x capital y capital z you want to check whether it is atom or it is variable then what you can do is you can use the uh, prolog predefined predicate atom so how it is working it is returning you, you true or false depending on the argument is atom or not so whatever argument you are passing if it is constant then it will return you true if it is not constant then it will return you false so atom can be used test whether x is bound to a symbolic atom or not okay so if you will have atom in bracket f o o t foot so that's the fixed value so it will give you yes atom 3 so okay so that is the basic value so it will give you no because it is integer it is considering only the string atoms over here atom in single quotations foot so it is also yes but as it is in double quotation it will give you no there are other functions also that you can check with data types for example integer x if you want to check whether uh, the argument which you are passing is holding integer value or not then you can use this so test whether the passed argument x is integer or not similarly you can use re real also and string also so in any application where you have to check data type you can use that now the basic arithmetic operations that prolog is supporting few of them are listed over here which you can use in the programs which we are going to do ahead so uh, a plus b yani uh, the same plus operator we had been using that is a and b both will be summed together a minus b subtraction between a and b uh, multiplication of a and b division of a and b integer division if you want uh, the division of a and b but in integer mode then you you, you can use like this then a to the power of b so uh, that that can be exponent can be used like this the negative a is used like this now there are certain mathematical functions also which can be used for example sin cos square root absolute value so just like we had been using them in c language similarly they can be used over here also so sin a it is sin of a cos of a absolute value of a square root of a 
similarly there is a pro, uh, prolog predefined function max also that will identify maximum out of two numbers so max a comma b it, it gives you maximum out of two numbers so see later we are also going to implement maximum uh, function on our own not the prolog predefined in that case we are not going to use the name max instead we will use max1 or my max any other name so that it is not going to call the prolog predefined function okay so there are certain predefined predicate of prolog also available and those names we we should not be using now suppose we want to check for equality in prolog means a and b both are equal or not in that case the equality is checked with this operator uh, equal to colon equal to if you want to check whether they are not equal to then it should be checked with equal to slash equal to so these are the basic arithmetic operator which we are going to use ahead now let us see how you are going to write the arithmetic expressions in prolog suppose you have to say 6 plus 2 equal to 8 okay so that is written like it is written in reverse means 6 plus 2 will remain 6 plus 2 only but assignment operator over here equal to in prolog is used as a string assignment not as assigning the value so equal to should be read as is so in prolog this statement can be written as 8 is 6 plus 2 so equal to in mathematical term which we have is in prolog it is written as is is 6 multiplied by 2 is equal to 12 so this can be read as in prolog as 12 is 6 multiplied by 2 so accordingly all expression we can convert to equivalent prolog expression as you can observe over here if we move ahead what all you can check suppose these are the things that you have written in prolog program what all you can check if you will check as a goal that 8 is 6 plus 2 then it will give you yes why because 6 plus 2 is resulting in 8 that's why so this is how you can check these expressions but if you want to use variable then then it is going to give you value also means if you want to check what is the value of 6 plus 2 then you should write it like x is 6 plus 2 so it will return you x equal to 8 If you write x is six multiplied by two, then it will give you a, give you x equal to twelve. So for any mathematical expression, even without writing pro program, if you directly perform this, it is going to give you answer. Okay, let us check that. So if I write over here, x is four plus five. Is it visible? C. x is 4 plus 5 then it is giving you answer x equal to 9 but instead of that if i will write something like this x equal to 4 plus 5 what is going to be answer c can you can you check what is the change over here if you write x is 4 plus 5 is then it will give you 4 plus 5 is answer 9 but if you write x equal to 4 plus 5 then it will consider as you have used equal to operator it is going to re read 4 plus 5 as string string assignment variable x is assigned the value of 4 5 4 plus 5 where 4 plus 5 is a string that way it is going to consider so this is how sing a simple arith arithmetic expressions you can check okay now let us move ahead okay now there are certain built in predicates operators other comparative operators which we can use and they are A less than, greater than, greater than, or equal to, less than, or equal to, equal to, etc. Okay, so we'll see certain examples where we are going to use them. Let, how we are going to use them? Let us take a simple example. If you want to check that given number n is positive or negative, we know that in C, if you have to write a program, a function to check the given number is positive or negative, what you are going to do? If n is greater than zero, it is positive. If it is less than zero, then it is negative. so we will select the name of the predicate first of all suppose the name we have selected is positive now in bracket capital n always wherever we are going to write rule we are going to pass variable to it so suppose passed variable is n then what should be the body of rule over here n it it will return you true when n is positive so what should be the body n greater than 0 full stop simple so if the value of n is 10 if you are passing over here 10 what will happen 10 greater than 0 yes it is true so as the body of the rule is true it will give you positive 10 also as true are you getting this now similarly if you want to check non zero it can be done like non zero in bracket n it is not zero when it is either n is greater than 0 or less than 0 so see observe over here we have used semicolon here what is use of semicolon 
semicolon indicates all just like comma is indicating end semicolon in prolog is indicating or are you getting a little we'll write more program so it will be more clear over here what i am trying to convey is just like the rule you have written earlier the same similar type of rule we are going to write here but using the mathematical operations okay now uh, again we are just summarizing what are mathematical operations we have plus minus multiplication division then we have certain mathematical functions also available square root exponent cos absolute value and all that so what we are trying to say over here is when i write 2 plus 3 then it indicates string if i am using equal to but if i'll be using is 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 then only it will be evaluating the value so to assign the value is is used so when i write capital n is 1 1 is assigned to capital n when i write sum is n plus 10 then the summation of n and 10 will be assigned to sum okay as you will practice it will be more clear suppose we have to identify what is maximum out of two numbers so or so let us say minimum out of two numbers okay so how we are going to write this uh, program so first of all we need to find out what should be prototype of this program so minimum this variable uh, predicate i have decided so i have written minimum as the name of the predicate now how many argument two arguments are the two numbers which you are checking which one is smaller so x comma y and z third argument i have taken is where the smallest number is going to be stored so minimum in bracket x comma y comma z colon hyphen what is going to be body okay the first possibility is x is less than y so we will write x less than y comma if x is less than y then which which number is smaller x so our resultant variable z will contain the value of x so what we have written here z is x are you getting this so what is important here comma is used as a and operator and if x is less than y is true then and then only it is going to execute z is x not otherwise So if I'll pass the value like minimum ten comma five, ten is not less than five. So this is z equal to x is not going to be executed. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? The second predicate which you have written will be executed only and only when the first one is true, not otherwise. When multiple predicates you need to check with and operator, they should be separated by comma. If you want to ch check with or operator, it should be separated by semicolon. Simple. Okay. Now what if x is greater than y? We'll write minimum x comma y comma z. If x is greater than or equal to y, in that case we'll write y is smaller. So z is y. Are you getting this? So here this is the same explanation written here that the first two values are we are comparing. The last variable is where we are going to store the minimum value. What we are going to do? The same logic we did in C. We know how we are identifying minimum out of two numbers. First, we'll check x is less than y. Then x is the answer. So z is x. If x is not less than y, then y is the answer. So z is y. Simple, right? So see, uh, initially, don't copy paste. Write it on your own. So you will have practice, and you will realize it's so so simple. Now, see, this is same definition can be written in other way also. You can observe here. Instead of using next third variable z, I am using x and y only. So how that can be done? See. Minimum x comma y is going to be x when x is less than y. So when x is less than y, what is going to be your answer? Capital X. So instead of writing z as the third argument, I will directly write x. If x is greater than or equal to y, then which number is smaller? Y. So instead of writing z, I will directly write here y. See, are you getting this? So this method will be a little bit of a. Uh, um difficult for you for right now when we are practicing so you may choose the first method itself for the sake of simplicity later as you will have practice you can use these also both are simple see here in the second way instead of using the third variable z i have directly written the value that if x is less than y then third argument is x if x is greater than or equal to y then y is minimum so as an answer i'll provide here y okay so both answers are correct for finding minimum let us see one more example suppose you have to find out uh, maximum out of three numbers so i uh, the predicate name i have selected over here is max1 i won't use max because max is used for calculating a uh, maximum number out of two it is prolog defined predicate okay now if you have to find out maximum out of three number how many parameters you will pass 
थ्री विल बी द नंबर सो ए कॉमा बी कॉमा सी दे आर थ्री नंबर यू आर कंपेरिंग एंड फाइनली रिजल्ट एंड वेरिएबल वेर द आंसर इज गोइंग टू बी स्टोर्ड सपोज आई हैव टेकन एर जेड सो सी वॉट वॉज द फ्लो चार्ट वी हैव डिस्कस फॉर कैलक्युलेटिंग मैक्सिम आउट ऑफ थ्री नंबर इन सी फर्स्ट विल चेक ए इज ग्रेटर देन बी इफ ट्रू then check a is greater than c if that is also true then we will say that a is largest that is what i have written in the first line see here all the parameters are same all the lines are same call are same just body is different so what is the first check we are doing if a is greater than b and comma is end if a is greater than b and a is greater than c also then z is a means maximum is a if not then means a is greater than b but c is greater than a in that case z is c means maximum is c what is the second check we have we were making what is the second possibility the second possibility is a is not greater than b means b is greater than a then we will check b is greater than c also if yes then z is b If not, it means b greater than a, b less than, and b is less than c. Then z is c. I'll just make this uh, for the sake of simplicity. Otherwise, these four will be sufficing. That if c is greater than a, c is greater than b, then c is largest. Otherwise, b is largest. So these are the six possibility we have out of the three numbers. Simple. So if you will fire a query like max one, eleven, twenty two, four, comma x, then it will return you x equal to twenty two. That is the maximum number. Are you getting this? See, it's very simple. Just like the flow you had in C, similarly you have to write what is important, passing the parameters appropriately. Okay, just like the functions. So, what you have to perform today? You have to perform these six programs today. The first program is find maximum out of the three numbers which we have already done over here. Don't copy paste. Write on your own. Okay, fine. Find minimum out of the three numbers. Just modify this, and you will get minimum out of three number also. But still, write on your own. Check the given number is even or odd. How we can check the given number is even or odd? Using modulo operator, you can check. Or divide by two, you can check whether the given number is even or odd. Okay. Next, check the given number is positive or negative. That is already given in, uh, earlier. How you can check? If the number is greater than zero, uh, sorry, positive. Ha! Huh? If the number is greater than or equal to zero, it is positive. Otherwise, it is negative. Fine. Now calculate factorial of the given number and calculate Fibonacci series up to given number. So, see, this is what I am not going to discuss. Considering in last lecture we have discussed recursive rules, but if you cannot do, then we will discuss in next lab. So, what you have to do in program number five and six, you just need not to write. A rule, but you have to write recursive rule. So if I will pass factorial of five, it should return me five factorials answer. Okay. So how you are going to do that? You have to write recursive rule, and when you write recursive rule, you have to make sure terminating condition is written correctly. This next program is print Fibonacci series up to given number. See here, you are not printing entire Fibonacci series. Means one, one, two, three, five, eight. Not that way. If I pass Fibonacci five, then the fifth term only should be printed. Whatever is the fifth term value, only that is going to be printed, not the entire series. Okay. Again, for Fibonacci also, you have to use recursive definition. Just to make you think of the logic, I am not giving you logic. If if it sounds to be difficult, we will discuss that in next lab. So this is all the six programs you are supposed to perform in today's lab. Once you finish that. you have to submit before coming to the next lab duration this six programs then we are going to start discussing list if you get any query or doubt meanwhile then me and kayur sir are going to be online for entire 2 hours duration so please